situation is a decrease in response to the stimulus after repeated presentation. This is a way of learning that the animal stop responding to a certain stimulus if the stimulus is repeated over and over uh, in the same manner without changing in the strength of the stimulus. So it's a decrease in response to the stimulus when you repeat the same stimulus in the same intensity. Uh, like an, this kind of an example like the crows present uh, in cornfield. In order for the, the farmer wants to get rid of these crows, he installs a scarecrow. The first day they install this scarecrow, the birds will be scared and will not uh, come into the field. But after a few days, they will know the trick and what will happen is that they will be standing on the scarecrow. This is a kind of habituation that the birds learn that the stimulus is not dangerous uh, so they just ignore it. So habituation, it's not only a decrease in response, it's a way of learning to ignore none or uh, uh, response which is not dangerous. Now the first scientist who started working on this kind of research is Eric Kandel, this guy. His work on aplegia, the sea snail, he started like this experiment, he did this experiment many times anyways. He poked the, the siphon of the water snail, it will retreat back, it will withdraw the gills. But when the siphon is stimulated over and over for many times, uh, it will no longer withdraw. So after several minutes of repeated stimulation, no longer withdraw. What is happening at the level of the synapse of these uh, of the cells of the of the uh, seal snail? It's about all about calcium voltage uh, gated channels and the release of neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. When the action potential reaches the end of the synapse, the calcium voltage uh, the calcium voltage uh, voltage gated channels become less responsive. So as they become less responsive, less calcium will enter into the synaptic cleft. This means less vesicles are made by the Golgi apparatus and less neurotransmitters are released by exocytosis in the synaptic cleft. If less neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft, this means less neurotransmitters binding on the receptors here, less sodium channels will open on the postsynaptic membrane and less depolarization in the postsynaptic membrane. This means that there is no action potential will be triggered in the post-synaptic membrane. And here where the message stops, usually it's in motor neurons. So the in habituation, there is no change in post-synaptic neuron sensitivity to the neurotransmitter. And uh, how does this happen? It's about the number of neurotransmitters. That's in regular one, and that's in the habituated uh, nerve. You see like less neurotransmitters, fewer neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft. This means fewer, uh, fewer stimulation of the postsynaptic neuron, in this case the motor neuron, and no action potential will be generated in the postsynaptic neuron. This slide also like explains further how does this work. So the neurotransmitters should be released as chemical signals and should bind to the, to the receptors on the postsynaptic uh, membrane. This is just like kind of uh, sum up or uh, wrap up of everything you need to know this information thank you guys